uh, get your game on. Get your game on. Gamification for learning and development. Want to let you know that you are in the right place if <laughs> this webinar for you, if uh, you're the type of professional who wants to make sure this never happens again. All right, if you've ever seen that face, because here's the thing, folks, your workforce continues to get younger and younger, and our experiences with information keeps changing. That's why you're excited to be adding gamification to your talent and development and employee engagement mix. So uh, who am I? My name is Jonathan Peters, and I've spent a oh, good part of more, probably more than two decades now studying uh, why people do what they do. Originally started in the marketing world, and what we found out is, is that, as you would expect, is that people are motivated differently. Okay? You can't just have one message that appeals to all folks, and that seems fairly obvious to you, I'm sure. That's when I became interested in what we define as fun. Uh, it turns out that different people have different motivational profiles and therefore have different definitions of fun. For instance, uh, do you like to bungee jump, uh, leap out of airplanes, uh, generally fly through the air, <laughs> all right? But do you know people who enjoy those things? Or do you enjoy a quiet evening at home uh, binge watching Netflix, right? So it's different, different folks have different definitions of fun. So since uh, joining the Sententia team, I've asked how we can bring these different definitions of fun to engage people in learning and development. What I want you to do is to uh, think about what games did you play as a child? What games did you play as a child? And then enter those into the uh, chat box over there, which hopefully is working now. Uh, different games that you saw at, that you played as a child. So just enter those in. Have a few examples up here for you as you type in the different uh, games that you enjoyed. So we can see we have uh, the good old video game days. <laughs> Scrabble, I'll tell you some stories there. Got Monopoly, the most popular game, Monopoly. And when you think about it, as you're typing those in, isn't it true that uh, other people, the people that you were involved with, like your siblings or your friends, uh, enjoyed different games, <laughs> all right? Maybe you couldn't get uh, your sister or your brother to actually play along with you. So for instance, I see chess up there, is uh, maybe not everybody liked chess, right? Maybe not everybody wanted to spend time. Or maybe there were those folks uh, here who, uh, when you think of Monopoly, it took forever and then you had to dominate and you actually had to win. Uh, in our last uh, level one uh, certification, we had this uh, lady who liked Red Rover. Is anybody, oh, there it is right there, Red Rover, right? And if you think about it, some folks didn't like that as a child, right? Hide and seek, uh, so very, very active games, Carrie, great. Versus uh, checkers, maybe some people got bored of checkers. So when we think about what we find as fun, what you enjoyed, maybe other folks didn't enjoy it. Right? And so that's why when we look at uh, gamification specifically, is how do we take the mechanics of what makes those games fun? Okay, so why is chess uh, fun and checkers isn't? Why is the game of life, for instance, on the screen there, fun for some folks? Clue might be fun for some folks. Different people like different, uh, different things. So how can we create those mechanics or take those mechanics, I'm sorry, take those mechanics and embed them into our learning programs? And that's where uh, gamification comes in. So for the Next uh, 55 minutes here, we're, here's what we'll cover. We're going to give you a clear understanding of what gamification can achieve, the five essential steps to developing a successful gamification program, a practical method, okay, which is important, a practical method for approaching gamification in your organization, 
and four major mistakes to avoid when planning your gamification strategy. Okay, so like I said, in just a few minutes, we're going to cover all of these and uh, all of these issues. Plus, uh, at the end, we're gonna have a cool little offer for you uh, at the end of this webinar. So we have a lot to cover, and so let's get it started. But actually, before we get started, I want to uh, know your level of uh, gamification. What's your experience? Okay, because I want this to be about you. Okay, so uh, for the, the rest of the webinar to be about you. So I want to know what is your uh, level. So for instance, on the scale of, of one to five, you can put this in the chat bar, how would you rate yourself? So you would be a five if you consider yourself a gamification guru. You've already uh, applied gamification, you've created uh, programs in gamification. Uh, four, maybe you've gamified a program. A three, you have theoretical knowledge of gamification, haven't actually put it together. A two is you've learned a little bit about gamification. And one, you've heard the term, all right? So uh, so where would you uh, place yourself on the scale? So I got uh, four, some of you are applying to me as the organizer, so I can see those. We got some twos, some threes. Uh, I think I had a four back up there, so good. And it, it's all good, whatever it is. So even just hearing the term, uh, congratulations, uh, learning a little bit about it, congratulations. And of course, uh, having knowledge and applying it is even better. All right, so uh, keep those uh, putting in because here's what's going to happen. We are going to, we, I am going to gamify this uh, process, this webinar. Okay, because see, I have an objective here. I have an objective for this uh, webinar is that I want you to be engaged. So to en help you be engaged, I'm going to apply a certain game mechanic to encourage that behavior that I'm wanting. See, I don't want this to be the type of webinar that's playing in the background while you delete your emails. I want you paying attention to what's going on. And in this case, entering uh, into the chat bar. So here's the gamification part. If you put it in a number in and you can still do it there's still time you will receive the gamification explorer badge all right so we're adding a badge here to this process the game mechanic now this is low tech so here's what we're going to do every time you get a badge uh, you can take a picture screenshot you can even draw on a piece of paper what that badge is i want you to keep track of it and uh, so you can compile your badges throughout this webinar and you can see my email, that's my personal email here at Sententia, bighead at sententiagames.com. So after the webinar, if you, all you have to do is let me know how many badges you got during this, uh, during this webinar. So as you're collecting badges, all you have to do is uh, let me know, send me an email. Uh, you can, I'll trust that you're honest, okay? So for some of you, again, we're going back to or motivational profiles for some of you just collecting badges throughout the game throughout the webinar would be fun okay it's fun to collect badges but for some of you that's not necessarily going to motivate you so i'm going to add a different mechanic of which we call a win state okay a win state so if throughout the webinar you you'll collect these badges okay so if uh, at the end, or well, let me say this, everybody, you can see it right there on the screen, has a chance to win two hours of gamification consultation with Monica Cornetti. Now, most of you know uh, who Monica Cornetti is, but if you don't, she is uh, the internationally recognized expert in gamification. So a little over a year ago uh, at the World Conference on Gamification in Barcelona, Spain, uh, she was among uh, three top people who were nominated as the top gamification influencers in the world. Okay, so, and by the way, she was the only expert on the panel who focuses on talent development. So uh, she'll be co-hosting uh, Sententia Level 1 Gamification Certification, which is starting in about a week and a half. 
uh, this will be your opportunity to better engage your learners in programs they not only enjoy, but where they can also demonstrate actual improvement. Okay, so I'll share more about the certification opportunity at the end of this program. But what's important now is that if you collect at least four badges, you will be entered in for a chance to win this consultation time. Okay, but more importantly, you will lose this option if you do not earn those at least four of those badges. Okay, so keep track of your badges and uh, stay with us for the opportunity to win. All right, so here we go. For those of you uh, just joining us uh, late, what we've done is uh, we've established that gamification will continue to be a buzzword in uh, two, 2017. And you will use gamification to engage your learners. In fact, they expect it. Because if your employees or clients were born after 1971, they are what we call the gamers, or what is known as the G generation. The G generation is over 56 million uh, strong. It is a combination of Gen Xers, those who were born between 1965 and 1981, and millennials, those who were born after uh, 1982. And now we also have uh, Gen Zens, uh, those folks who were born after 2001, they are also beginning to uh, enter the workforce. Because here's the thing, folks, Right now, the G generation is moving up in the business ranks. They're becoming managers, partners of CEOs, and chances are you manage employees from this generation, right? And in all likelihood, before you leave the, your career, you will be managed by them. So the G generation will continue to change how business is done uh, because of who they are, how they grew up, and how they see the world. Okay, and this becomes important because they also, uh, it's also how they go after what they want. And so this is why gamification is increasingly important to the learning and development uh, field. So <laughs> what is gamification? And if you go out and you Google the term gamification, you, you'll see there's a lot of different definitions of it. There's not a clear definition of, of what uh, gamification is. Right? So the definition that we will use today is gamification is motivational design. It uses game elements, mechanics, game mechanics, and game dynamics in a non-game context in order to engage uh, users and to solve problems. So forward thinking uh, organizations are beginning to understand the power of gamification, how it can increase engagement as well as the bottom line. Okay? But here's something important. We need to make an important distinction here. Gamification is not about playing a game. All right, I want to repeat that. Gamification is not about playing a game. It's taking the elements, mechanics, and dynamics and applying them in a non-game context. So let's look at some uh, examples that are in the uh, business world. Now, again, our focus here is on uh, the learning and development field, but let's look at how gamification is being applied more generally. So for instance, you have McDonald's and uh, they do this uh, Monopoly promotion every year. Now, yeah, you say, well, Monopoly is a game. It was mentioned on the types of games that we play up there at the top, and which is, which is great, but that's not really what's going on here, okay? What they do is you go in and they have these little characters and, and you're familiar with the, the game Monopoly, but what you're really getting is scratch off tickets. So you have the mechanic of chance and you go in and you buy your little meal and then you get this card and you scratch it off. And what could happen is you could win $30,000 or a brand new car. But what you probably win is uh, some uh, an upgrade in your drink, uh, maybe some from French fries or something. But it's significant that the amount of money that uh, the, the increase in revenue that McDonald's makes every time they run this promotion. And all they've done is added this, this small little game mechanic to increase uh, people coming in and buying more of their food. Here's one you may be a little more familiar with. Oh, oops, click too far. But if you look all the way to the right of your screen there, uh, to loyalty programs. Let's start thinking about the different types of loyalty programs you belong to. 
not necessarily a game, but it has game mechanics applied. In other words, loyalty programs will change behaviors. So uh, a couple of years ago, or I guess a little over a year ago, uh, I was coming up to uh, the end of the year. The, so this is not my account you're seeing in front of me. This is a fake one, but it did happen to be American Airlines. And I needed six more uh, segments to maintain my super duper status with uh, American Airlines. And so I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I teach online. So I like to go back to Las Vegas at the end of the uh, semester to wrap things up, to listen to all the students' uh, sob stories and everything. And so I needed six more segments, and I live in Austin, Texas now. So that's two, so Austin to Dallas, Dallas to Las Vegas, and then coming back. So that's four segments, I'm still too short. So I changed my plans. There was a potential client in the Bay Area, East Bay, and uh, so I thought, well, I could go out and see the client. Didn't need to, I could have talked on the phone, but a live thing would add some segments. So again, Austin, Texas to Dallas, Dallas to SFO, and then uh, SFO to uh, Las Vegas. The problem is, as you would expect, there are plenty of direct flights from San Francisco to Las Vegas. So instead of doing the obvious and the cheapest thing, which would be just to fly to Las Vegas, I flew to uh, Phoenix and then Phoenix back to Vegas. So in other words, this loyalty program caused me to spend money I didn't want to spend, to spend time to, to sit uncomfortably in a silly little tube in the sky. It changed my behavior. For what? So that I can get two free checked bags instead of one free checked bag at the uh, regular uh, gold standard. So the point is loyalty programs add a gamification element. Or for instance, the one I started there you can see is a course coming from LinkedIn. Have you noticed that with LinkedIn you never, um, you never actually achieve your full, uh, you're, you're never done, right? Well, the reason is because is LinkedIn wants you to keep giving information about yourself. So by creating, by having this game mechanic, it keeps you uh, engaged, keeps you giving information that you might not necessarily give them naturally. So think about uh, you in the in the loyalty programs that you're a part of. OK, and so let's share those. Uh, what badges, levels or rewards have you earned as a reward program or a social game? So thinking about out there, put them in the chat uh, box there. What are some uh, loyalty programs that you're a part of? I mentioned American Airlines, uh, but share with all of us uh, what are some of the loyalty programs that that you belong to? And while you do that, and while you're typing that in, also think about, so share some examples, but also why was that important to you? Okay, so we got Holiday Inn, Marriott, uh, Starwoods, good, uh, good old Sheraton. Yeah, we always say that there's, uh, you're either a Hilton person or a Marriott person. But, uh, but again, it changes behaviors. Right? Emerald Club, yeah, free upgrades. Yeah, Emerald Club, they're, they're still doing the one, two free right now. <laughs> yeah. Travel credit cards. Yeah, think of that. To earn rewards, you're using a specific uh, travel card. Uh, Delta, uh, Richard must be from Atlanta. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, Thomas, uh, yeah, Thomas, you're uh, replying to me directly. That's the Starbucks, of course. There we go. See, so think about. Um, so what do I get? Yeah, I get a free Starbucks every once in a while, but how cool is it? How cool is it that I use the app, right? And so what happens is we're adding in the status. We have certain motivators of status that, that are brought into it. Yeah, we got Hilton. Yeah, you get that floor, <laughs> the honors floor. Good, good. All right, so again, guess what? Because you entered in, uh, you get another badge, right? And now you have the creative contributor badge, all right? So take a screenshot, take a picture, write down on a piece of paper, what is your badge? Again, uh, count, counting up your badges for the end. Uh, Tango, Tab, Freeme. Cool. Yeah, I was, um, when they get us in for the free, free food. Good, okay, so give yourself a badge if you entered in a uh, loyalty program there. Now, yeah, sure, all of these are what we call outward facing, customer facing. 
Well, uh, our focus here at Sentench is actually inward facing, and that's how do we use gamification internally? How do we, um, oh, there's the, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> I have to keep pressing my button. All right, so the, um, the point here is, is that yes, customer uh, companies use gamification all the time to get us engaged, okay, to pull us in. But what about internally? Can we use gamification to motivate people in, internally? Okay, so uh, think about your organization. Can you use a gamification to motivate employees? Uh, to ramp up onboarding, to improve e-learning or instruction programs? Uh, can, can you uh, use it internally? Okay, because that's what we want to look at, and that's what we're talking about. So here at Sententia, we have this uh, five-step uh, trademarked and proven uh, system called, that, that happens to go along with the acronym GAMES. GAMES. So uh, we want to take it so that it's not overwhelming, it's not over the top. Can you uh, use this nice little process to create a gamified system? So game stands for goal, adventure, method, engagement, and then sync it. Okay, so using that, and the, we have this five stage uh, process. Now, it gets a little more fun than this, than just using an acronym. And so in our uh, virtual level one certification uh, workshop, starting, like I said, in about a week and a half here, you'll actually be given a treasure map that walks you through the five stages, okay? And uh, this is the, uh, the actual treasure map that you'll be getting. And you can see the five stages uh, are represented by five colors here. It starts in the bottom left-hand corner and ends up there at the uh, middle right in the blue there, asking the question, is it fun? And so instead of just going through, we actually are gamifying the, the process here. And you can see that each of the five steps also has six stepping stones inside the steps. Now, of course, in the webinar uh, today, we're not going to go through all the, the steps here, but I'd like to address a few of these to, to give you a good overview of how this works and how this works. So, uh, but basically, if you were to take this map and to go on every stepping stone of all the uh, five levels, we would basically guarantee you a successful gamified uh, program. You'd be able to show clear ROI. So for instance, uh, down here at the second stepping stone in, I just uh, did the little circle there. See where it says, who's playing your game? Okay. So it's important that we understand who is actually playing. Because here's the uh, one of the problems, folks. Gamification should always start with a player profile, or what we now call a learner personas. Okay? You want to know who will actually be involved with your uh, training program. What will motivate them to engage, and what behaviors do they do you want them to do? Do you know your players? <laughs> do you really know uh, what's going on in your training programs? So uh, at your organization. Uh, you probably have some method for uh, for understanding who uh, your learners are. So uh, in the chat bar, again, uh, just uh, share with us, uh, how do you get to know who your participants are? For instance, do you use assessments? Do you have surveys? Uh, do you have questionnaires? Uh, to start typing those in. And by the way, yes, some of us have too much on our plate. All right, so I want to acknowledge you if you're just overwhelmed and uh, you're just too busy to actually get to know who your learners are. So uh, just because you don't have a fancy assessments tools, uh, questionnaires or something like that, good assessments. And yeah, share with us what type of assessments if you don't mind. Um, you can, but if you're too busy, you can just write busy, <laughs> busy in there in the chat bar so you can still get uh, credit for sharing with us. So I do want to uh, find out during analysis. Yeah, talking to stakeholders, good. Yeah, why not? Why don't we talk to folks? Uh, icebreakers, assessments, conversations, good. So nobody's typed in too busy yet. <laughs> so you guys are doing well. Yeah, because it is important to understand who our people are, okay? Um, so no matter what you're typing in there, uh, keep them coming in. Yes, you get another badge, and this time it's the player-centric design badge. Okay, so 
player-centric design badge, so congratulations. Again, keep collecting those badges. Because here's the thing, folks, is that you'd be surprised how many organizations do not spend the time to get to understand who their learners are, who their participants are. So it's important to look at this. And so at Sententia, this is uh, very important to us uh, because here's the thing, folks. Gamification is about 75% psychology and only 25% technology. Okay, so it's important to understand who's playing the game. And like I said, we uh, use what's called this, what I call the 16 whys or the 16 core uh, desires. Okay, and so all of these, remember I was talking about fun, go to our ideal of fun. Okay, so for instance, you'll see curiosity over there, third one on the left you probably are higher motivated in curiosity than your participants. <laughs> How do I know that? Because you're on the webinar, you're, uh, you're on it live right now, you're uh, going through the recording of it. So you're curious, you want to know more uh, than the folks that, that you're creating programs for. And this creates, uh, this creates uh, some dissonance between the programs you create and the folks who are out there. Okay, so you might be hitting some of the human desires with your current practices, but you might also be pushing people away because you're appealing to uh, motivators that aren't uh, appealing to them. All right, so we actually might be causing people to disengage. So this, and here's the point, folks, this is why simply throwing game mechanics at a program is not enough. You can't just throw points, badges, and leaderboards at a program and hope that it'll be successful. We need to begin, first of all, by knowing who our players are and what mechanics will motivate them. So very, very important, okay? So uh, just as an example at the top there, uh, you can see these uh, different games engaged. Why would some, some people like life? Why would some people like the Rubik's Cube and so on? All right, so, uh, we did the second one. Let's look at the third one. Again, we're not going through all the stepping stones here, but let's look at uh, defining objectives, okay? Because this is another area where organizations really drop the ball, okay? Because they don't start with clear objectives. Uh, the Gartner Research Group, uh, Gartner G-A-R, uh, G-A-R-T-N-E-R Research Group, you can uh, look these folks up. Uh, but they looked at a, well, they made a prediction. This is back in 2015. Okay, so, uh, but we can, we can extrapolate that. <laughs> It'll continue on. It probably is still in 2016. But they predicted at the end of 2015, they said 80%, 80% of gamified business applications will uh, failed to meet their business objectives. 80% failed to meet objectives. And we could, we could, pretty much extra also extrapolate that this would be the same for inside the workplace would have similar fail numbers. So to start the gamification design process, uh, you want to start with your objectives. And like I said, you'd be surprised how few trainers and designers uh, are actually able to express outcomes. When we work with them, we talk to them, uh, to folks and organizations, we say, well, what do you want to, what do you want the outcomes to be from your uh, program? And they'll say things like, uh, oh, we want everybody to work better together. Okay. <laughs> we want better teams and more teamwork. Well, that's great. But how would you know if people are working better to, together? What, how would you define it? How would you, uh, how would you know if you're, this is the, the measurement I always like to say, how will you know you're halfway there? <laughs> if you want folks to work better together, how will you know you're halfway to working better together? So we want, you know, with gamification, our goal is to demonstrate a clear return on investment or return on effort to our organization. Okay, so again, very, very important that we lay this groundwork here at the, be, uh, at the beginning when we're, when we're looking at gamifying a program. So let's move to the second area there, and this is where we can actually have some fun. We can actually have some fun. So uh, we have uh, there, frame your quest, see that first uh, yellow stepping stone, frame your quest in a spellbinding story, okay? So here's the thing, folks, storytelling is very, very important to how we learn, how we process information. As humans, it's our longest and most, effective method for passing along information. 
because story captures our imagination and allows us uh, to not only remember information, which is important, but to better apply it to different situations. Okay? So in storytelling, the interaction is personal, engaging, and immediate. Uh, storytelling also captures the attention of your audience. Uh, it enhances the understanding of the information and, um, and so on. So it's very, very important, especially in the model here at uh, Sententia, that we create an overriding narrative in all of our gamification programs. So to give you some uh, quick examples here of uh, different programs that we've created here is uh, Snow White and Payroll Administration. Uh, there's a company that came to Monica. Uh, they were, what they were doing is they were developing a, a program for uh, payroll law. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, pay payroll law uh, sounds incredibly boring and, um, and of course, tedious and, and so on. So how can we make this interesting? Because if people are going to be sitting here for a full day of this, of payroll law, how can we make it interesting? So what Monica did is she uh, stood in front of the room and uh, held up an apple. And she said, this is a poison apple. <laughs> how is payroll law like a poison apple? Well, because if you bite into the poison apple, you might get audited by a government, uh, governing agency. So we need to go through this program so that we don't end up eating the poison apple. Now, really quickly, it turns out that Snow White is, uh, the story of Snow White is in the public domain. Okay? So you can use it, anybody can use uh, Snow White. Here's the catch, Disney, Disney owns the seven dwarves. So you can't have the seven dwarves, but what she did do is uh, she had Grumpy Gus. And so uh, why, is Grump, why is Grumpy Gus grumpy? Well, because he's been divorced three times and his wages are being garnished. So now they can learn about garnishment uh, with uh, Grumpy Gus. Or Dopey Dan, he was the boss's son. Uh, who might be misclassified, which is a big issue uh, right now. And uh, oh yeah, and the woodsman, uh, the woodsman, uh, we can learn about uh, 1099 employees because see the, the queen had very, very specific uh, instructions about how he was to kill Snow White. He's supposed to carve her heart out, you know, because this was a children's story, right? <laughs> it's a children's story. And um, so uh, does the woodsman cr uh, do this for other uh, wicked queens? Um, uh, does he provide the service? Does he advertise in the woods and so on? So wrapping it around a story like this helps in, engage folks. Um, here's one uh, that I'm uh, proud of because uh, I created it, <laughs> the Saint Your Grandma's Grammar. And the uh, concept here, again, I don't know about you, but grammar is extremely boring for a lot of folks, but it's important. And so really quickly, the dynamic here is that grandma loves grammar. And, uh, and grandma also makes cookies. So throughout the day, uh, you're collecting cookies. So that's an economy inside the program, the game, of, uh, game mechanic of economy. So you're collecting cookies. Now, here's the catch. See, things have changed since grandma was around. Grandma used this thing called a typewriter. I know you haven't seen one of these, but uh, she used a typewriter. And uh, so when, when things didn't Things have changed since then. So in grandma's day, for instance, she'd put two spaces after a period, right, with a typewriter. Well, we only have one space now. That's been the way it's been ever since we've had, well, since uh, uh, good old folks at Apple <laughs> created Helvetica. Uh, but the point is, is now we have one. So when things have changed, now you, you get a boss point. So if you only put one space after a period, you get a boss point, which is a dollar extra an hour. So around $2,000 extra a year. The problem is if you get a boss point, you've hurt grandma's feelings and you lose some cookies. OK, so again, using the game mechanic of, uh, of economy and, of course, a story and a narrative here uh, to, to teach grammar. Uh, quick, more quickly, some other ones uh, we've done. Uh, this was uh, we used uh, the draft program for uh, to teach uh, diversity leadership uh, for the executive team, uh, diversity uh, at a major, major uh, I guess it'd be a Fortune 5 company, maybe, uh, more recently uh, in uh, South Africa, uh, uh, Moffat King University was part of an onboarding program. Again, didn't use the direct characters. By the way, if you're wanting inspiration, uh, Pixar is great for this. Uh, so we just had the, one of our graduates from uh, Level 1 that we just uh, wrapped up in November. He used... Uh, 
the secret life of pets is where he got his inspiration for his training program. So uh, if you want inspiration on where stories come from, again, you can't use it directly because uh, they own it, but you can get inspiration out there. Uh, Storm Chasers we uh, did for uh, teaching uh, uh, sales training at an organization and so on. So just to give you some quick examples of how you, or I want you to think about how you could uh, wrap your programs inside of some sort of narrative, some sort of story. Okay. Because again, storytelling promotes emotional engagement. Okay. Uh, this type of engagement creates positive outcomes in the workplace, uh, ties people to, uh, to their boss, their coworkers, and company values. So that's why uh, story and narrative are extremely important inside the uh, sententia process, the five-stage process. So which brings us to number to the third one here. And uh, in any organization, there are different things that you need uh, that you need people to learn. Uh, well, they need to learn. Let me say it that way: that they need to learn to properly perform their job. Okay. For instance, uh, you, there might be specific principles somebody needs to learn before they can apply them to solve a particular problem. Okay. So I want you to think about what type of uh, learning activities uh, that you have in place right now. Okay. So um, for instance, uh, you'll notice that we're using a training map uh, here so that uh, we start in the bottom left and we end up at the bottom right. So so that's a type of design and element that, that we're using. Um, but it's important to start thinking about the types of activities that uh, that, that you can uh, that you use now. So learning activities <laughs> and I uh, just realized I need a little prop here that I don't have in front of me. And that is a countdown clock because we are going to do an activity here shortly. So I am going to uh, make a quick little uh, run to grab my phone so that I can have a, a stopwatch for you, which is an important game mechanic. So hold on just a second. If I had an advertisement, I'd put it up for you <laughs> while I run to get my phone. Hold on. Just a second. Okay, so we're back. So when we, uh, it's probably the furthest I've been away from my phone in a long time. <laughs> so, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to demonstrate how a uh, how activity is important in learning. Okay, so if you're checking your email right now or playing Angry Birds or whatever, it's time to come back to the screen, right? Because this is going to be up here on the screen for you. And what I'm going to do is we're going to be a slide up, and you'll have 60 seconds. Okay, one minute. During these 60 seconds, what I want you to do is look at the numbers on the screen and count them in numerical order. Okay, so when you see it, what you'll do is you'll start with number one. You'll look for number one, and then you'll look for number two, and look for number three, four, five, and so on. And what I want you to do is see how high up you how high up you know you can progress in the 60 seconds. Okay, and then on on the piece of paper, whatever, I want you to write down the highest number you reached. Okay, so it'll make sense when we get over there. Let me get the watch ready for you and begin. Starting in with one, look for two, look for three. And stop. All right. So write down that number, whatever that number is. How high did you get up? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is, okay, hold on. What we're going to do here is I'm going to add a uh, 
help you out here a little bit. Okay, so if uh, this is what we'll do is, so we're gonna put up another slide, okay? And what I'll have you do is we'll put another 30, I mean, 60 seconds up. Let me reset. And um, another 60 seconds. And notice how much easier it is this time. Okay, so same thing. Start with one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And we'll see how much better you do. Let's watch for your improvement. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Start. and stop all right so put that number above the other one here's what we want folks is what is the difference okay the gap so take your top number and subtract the the first number from this number and let's write up there what is the difference okay how uh what is the the gap how what was your improvement let's put it that way how did you improve so let's put those in the chat bar <laughs> Thomas, we got, okay, we got a six improvement, 48, geez, okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, by the way, did anybody get all the numbers? What is it, 60, I think? How was highs it go? I can't remember, 48, I think 50 is the top number. Good, good. Good. All right, so keep those numbers going. So if you participated, guess what? You get another badge, moving to mastery badge. So we got the little monkey there. <laughs> so that's our, that'll be the badge for us. But notice how just adding one mechanic, one, uh, activity one one little by adding those crossbars there it made it easier for you okay and so that's the point here is we have these different uh, learning activities and I know you're probably already using some okay and to bring us finally to the green level here which is the game mechanics okay we're adding game mechanics to the learning now what's important here is folks notice the foundation we laid to get here. We didn't just throw some points, badges, and leaderboards at some sort of program. We've done all this other stuff before we begin to actually add the mechanics. Now, here's the thing. There are over 300 game mechanics, all right, 300. I'm not gonna give you all 300. Uh, in the virtual uh, level one certification, like I said, in a week and a half here, there, we'll give you a, a reference point where you can see all 300. But we want to make sure this, folks, is that I uh, want you to get this concept, less is more. So in the uh, virtual certification, for instance, we have what we call starter cards that have the, the most used or the most popular mechanics. Okay, so you're not overwhelmed. These are the most common game mechanics uh, that, that you'll be given that you would actually work with. Okay, but the point here is that less is more. Right? So if you can repeat that to yourself aloud without uh, disturbing someone in the office, say it aloud, less is more. Because here's the thing, folks. Um, oh, here's the... Uh, the uh, cards here. So sorry about that. So here's just an example of some of the, the different, these are the starter cards from uh, level one certification. So in a nutshell, in the, at this level where we're at, we focus on our desired behaviors and then the motivators. So what do we want them to do? Why are they motivated? And then we align a mechanic with that will appeal to the motivator that will give the behavior that we want. Okay, so let me say that again so it makes sense. We have, first of all, remember we set our objectives, so what do we want them to do? We also understand who they are. Now, what mechanic can we use who, that motivates that person to give us that behavior? 
So let's say you want them to click on a like button, all right? <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, next, we would look at a motivator. Okay, why would they want to click the, the, the button? And then we'd have a mechanic that would entice them to click the button. Okay, so again, at the engagement level is where we start to actually apply game mechanics, okay, game mechanics. And then the final level there is we sync it up. Uh, this is important level, but ultimately we ask, is this fun? <laughs> All right, so just a quick overview of the, this is just a quick overview of the five stages. Uh, like I said, take a deeper dive. And um, the point of the counting game was to demonstrate, um, point of the counting game is to demonstrate how adding the uh, crossbar made it easier uh, for you to uh, to go through the process and to allow me to take a drink of water. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, so I want to, to uh, look at how you can apply what you have learned today to a real life program. So I want you to think about that, okay? So looking at you, your organization, what's on your plate, what you develop, start thinking about how you can apply it. What uh, what program do you have that could that could be gamified, for instance? Now, for proprietary reasons, for time, and so on, what I want you to do is write that down on a piece of paper. So not in the chat bar, uh, like I said, just to save some time here, and uh, also for uh, pri uh, proprietary reasons, uh, uh, write that down. So I want you to identify, uh, to make it practical, one program that, that you could gamify in your organization. And while you're thinking about that, again, trusting you, this is the develop, uh, the talent development ace, <laughs> all right? So that's the badge that you receive here. All right, so what we have here is, uh, like I said, we've gone through the, the five levels, but I want you to, to fasten your seatbelt and want to take this up a notch and to talk about what uh, where organizations fail. OK, because by now you have an overview of the five levels of gamification design and you have some ideas of how to apply gamification to your company. Okay? You're excited to get started about uh, gamifying some of your programs and uh, you want to join us and you're interested to learn more about uh, the certification program that we're uh, starting here in a week and a half. OK, so that's why we want to make sure, though, that uh, we look at it because I know some of you are saying, what does it cost? What does it cost? So gamification can be expensive, which is true, okay? Uh, and uh, especially if we want to look at it with technology and so on. Okay, so it can be costly and that can be considered as a barrier. But uh, when most people think about gamification, though, they think about uh, testing, implementation, not to mention technology. However, gamification can be done at, a, at a pretty much the same relative cost and time frame as in, uh, traditional instruction. And uh, we don't have to necessarily look at platforms and apps. OK, so that's why we want to make sure, though, if we're going through this, that we um, avoid these costly mistakes. So we've already covered these uh, in the webinar. First one is we fail to ask why we are gamifying in the first place. OK, why are, why are we gamifying this in the first place? Uh, we need, that's why we set our clear objectives in the beginning, because we want to be uh, want to be crystal clear. <laughs> All right, try saying that after talking. Uh, we want to be uh, crystal clear about what we are wanting to achieve, not just because it's cool, it's something new, but we want to be able to show clear return on investment, return on effort. Second, like I said, we've already sort of covered, we want to identify our players, who's playing the game. Uh, and who's playing the game, who are our people. Now, here's the problem and why this is such a big deal. We tend to create programs that we would find interesting. To go back to the games that you played as a child, what we do is, is we tend to create games that we enjoy, create programs that we enjoy. So Dr. Reese of uh, the Reese Motivational Profile, Stephen Reese, he says, he defines this as self-hugging, self-hugging. He says, not only do we believe everybody should be like us, but that they are like us, right? And so this is a problem when it comes to gamification. 
Yeah, and so this is where it's important that you realize as a developer that you create for you. So that's why we want to focus on the players first and then make sure we create uh, programs that attract them. So if we go back to curiosity, like I said, you might be higher motivated in curiosity than the folks that you are uh, creating for. And uh, the third costly mistake is attempting to fix a broken system, right? A common use of, of gamification is attempt to fix something. It would be essentially like painting this car, putting a nice coat of paint on the car will not cause it to run, right? The engine won't suddenly uh, be uh, more effective. Uh, won't, uh, won't work, let me say that. So uh, you want to make sure that your program is working well before we add gamification to it, okay? So it won't solve the problem of a bad product or bad, bad service. Uh, we need to start with something that already works and then add gamification to it. And then finally, and made all, all reference to this already, the problem with gamification is when people and organizations think that it's about points, badges, and leaderboards. PBL stands for points, badges, and leaderboards. Remember, there are more than 300 game mechanics. Perhaps some of those will work better than others. So um, the problem with points, badges, and leaderboards is they have a limited appeal. Uh, only certain uh, motivational profiles are attracted to points, badges, leaderboards. Uh, if you think uh, for you, would a leaderboard be effective uh, for you personally? Would it motivate you? Would it get you to want to play? Uh, are, are the badges working for you? Okay, so it, there's so much more to gamification. So your goal is to engage, not simply slap uh, game mechanics at on, on a program. Okay, so... Uh, what we've got here so far is you got a clear understanding of what gamification can achieve. Uh, we gave you the five essential steps for developing a successful gamified program. You have a practical, whoops, you have a practical method for approaching gamification in your organization, and you have four costly mistakes to avoid in the gamification uh, strategy. So now you're obviously uh, serious about gamification and creating. Uh, for your organization. And I want to acknowledge you for staying on the webinar here till, till the end, because most people in our field, in our field, learning and development, don't do what you're doing here today. And that's taking the time uh, to improve. And uh, so you now have a theoretical, at least a theoretical grasp of uh, gamification. Uh, you might also want to take this knowledge and application to the next level. Okay. And so want to apply and actually apply gamification to a training program. Uh, so you see, you're, on, you're online now, you're watching this webinar, and you've made a commitment and determination to take this to the next level. So that's why you're perfect for level one certification. Uh, it was specifically de designed for people like you who want to deliver an engaging program that gets results. So in about uh, on the 17th or 16th there, I I think that's wrong. I think it's actually the 17th. I think the 16th is a uh, holiday. So uh, we'll, we will we are beginning uh, the next uh, level one uh, virtual. I'll send out an email uh, for you because the link is rather long there for uh, getting more information and uh, getting you signed up for it. Uh, so we'll, we'll send you one. Uh, what we're doing at uh, Sententia is we're moving everything over to one platform on Kajabi and we uh, just weren't ramp, ramped up enough to get uh, sententiagames.com <laughs> pointing there yet. So good old technology. But uh, so we'll, we'll get you this, uh, this link here, but if you have the time to, to write it down as well. Um, what we'll do is we're going through the, 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 the map you just saw in much more in depth. Now, it's very, very important that you understand this. This is the only uh, gamification certification for specifically for talent development, and talent management professionals. Uh, it is recognized and approved by HRCI, uh, SHRM, and ATD for recertification credits. So you'll get six uh, six continuing ed credits uh, for, for going through the program. And uh, so are we ready? So here's some uh, more to catch up on the slides. So if, here's the thing, remember if you stay till the end, you get to win uh, those two free hours. So if you have at least four badges uh, today and 
uh, you sign up for le the level one certification, we will get you entered in for a free drawing to win <laughs> two hours of game uh, gamification consultation uh, with Monica. Okay, so uh, don't forget to email me your badges so that we can get you uh, all lined up and uh, signed up that way. And uh, so there's your two free hours. You'll get a gamification framework game board. So uh, you'll plenty. I just uh, uh, put the upload of tons of information for folks uh, that they'll be able to download uh, you uh, specifically. A uh, level one uh, certificate you'll get. And more importantly, uh, a copy, a, a digital copy of uh, Monica's book, uh, Totally Awesome Training, uh, the activity guide. Okay, so there you go. There's the link again, folks. Let me look at how we're doing on the time. Yep, we're uh, pretty good at this, wrapping it up. So, uh, like I said, I should have had my email there. My email, bighead at sententiagames.com. Uh, let me know your questions. Uh, like I said, went through uh, information fairly quickly here, but I want to make sure that uh, we answer any of your questions. And if uh, you have level one, like I said, this is starting on the 17th, not the 16th. Uh, it is virtual. Uh, we have webinars. It's a hybrid course. There's webinars, and uh, we go th uh, through a gamified online program as well. All right, folks, thanks for spending your lunch with me and uh, lunchtime if you're in the central time zone, <laughs> if you're in other time zones. Uh, it's your afternoon or your morning with me and uh, let's stay in the conversation. Thank you everyone. Mm -hmm.